All right, I would like to call the Personnel, Public Information, Human Relations, and Housing Committee to order. Um, and we have a motion uh, pursuant to the Governor Lee's Executive Order Number 16 regarding electronic meetings as extended by Executive Orders Number 34 and 51. I make a motion that this committee meeting agenda con constitutes essential business of the Metropolitan Council and that the meeting electronically is necessary to protect the health, safety, and welfare of Tennesseans in light of COVID-19 outbreak. I have a second. Second. Perfect. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Motion passes. <clears throat> Resolution RS 2020 by Bradford, Welsh, and others. Uh, request Mayor John Cooper to include a representative from the Community Oversight Board, a representative from the Community Organizations and Advocacy Groups, and a representative from the Federal Order of Police on a committee to select the next chief of police. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. We have a motion and second. Is there uh, any sponsors? Councilman Taylor, Councilman Bradford is here. Okay. Councilman Bradford, do you have any discussion? Um, I just want to state that the intent of this bill or this resolution, because um, I've had conversations with representatives from some of these groups asking for clarification. So the, the groups that I specifically want to see on uh, any search committee would be a representative from the COB, the FOP, and Turk, because I feel that they have the biggest interaction, the biggest share of that interaction with the police department and trying to determine policy with a new uh, chief of police. So they are called out specifically because I feel that they are the, they have the biggest share. But there is also that caveat that the mayor feels like there's other community groups that should be on there. He's, uh, it's there as well. But I just wanted to make that clarification that the three that are specifically called out were the ones that I specifically would like to see the mayor include on the search committee. Um, if there's any other groups that the mayor would like to add, I'm sure that they can um, reach out and lobby if there is that section for any other community groups. So just that clarification. All right. Thank you, Council Member Bradford. Is there any <clears throat> anyone else in the have any questions, any discussion? All right, this has been properly uh, moved a second. I had my hand up, Mr. Chairman. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, I, I had uh, one, one question for the sponsor, if we could, and, and that's, um, I mean, was were all the groups in this directly consulted uh, before being included in, the, in this legislation? So I've got I basically went off of what I was seeing in press releases and press statements. The when I initially had drafted this resolution, the FOP had not been included, but I saw that they had released a statement requesting that they be involved. So I took that as their that they would have no objection by being included on this resolution. But to simply answer your question, um, no, they were not directly consulted. Well, I, I guess I was asking about everyone. I mean, are the all are all the other groups have they been consulted? Not that I'm aware of. Just at this point, just the three that I've mentioned, I've spoken to either on the phone or they had some form of public statement already stating sure. that they wanted to be a part of it. Thank you, um, Mr. Chairman. With that, I, I guess uh, I have concern that we are writing groups into legislation. Uh, and then also, you know, uh, I don't necessarily mean this in a, in a sarcastic way, but I, I don't know how else to say it. Um, I think if there are members of the council that want to select the police chief, then those members should run for mayor because that is the job of the mayor to be uh, hiring those department heads. Um, and I just, I think this is kind of outside the, the lane of, of the council. So I'm going to be voting against this. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Young. 
Um, we have uh, Council Member Rutherford has his hand raised. Council Member Rutherford. Council Member Withers has his hand raised. Council Member Withers, you have the floor. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I appreciate the, the, the work of the, the sponsor in introducing this. I, I have some concerns as well about um, a process where we kind of pick certain groups, but don't necessarily have a comprehensive way of looking at all the groups that should be at the table. I, I don't have any objections to any of the three that are listed here. I think that they are, they're certainly all good choices. I guess uh, for me and in my experience with this committee and with working on personnel matters, you know, I always want to contact um, the human resources if we can to see what uh, their guidance might be for for how a selection committee might be, what those parameters are, particularly when you get into civil service protection uh, employees such as the chief of police. Uh, so uh, I, I think this is a, a, a good start. I'm not comfortable supporting this at this time because I just feel as though I have certain degrees of agreement with Councilmember Young that ultimately this is up to the mayor, uh, and we can provide feedback on that. Uh, and I think that that's good. I don't know that our resolution is necessarily the best way to do it, uh, to express that feedback. I'm a big fan personally of letters, which I kind of stated before. Um, uh, but um, I, I would want, uh, uh, before moving ahead myself on on a resolution, I would want to have a little bit more work done um, in consulting with the mayor uh, and the mayor's office directly, but also with uh, Metro Human Resources on what the parameters are so we'd all just understand what, what how, how the sort of process is supposed to work. And specifically, since the chief of police, as we know, is a civil service employee, uh, how those rules apply to, uh, to, to that search process and, and what protections or not uh, are gonna be present for that chief of police. I feel like it's such an important decision for our community. Policing is, is is so contentious at the moment, but it's such an important decision because the police really does have so much discretion over hiring and sometimes even disciplining police officers, which we all know is important, that we really need to get that right. I think the sponsor has done a great job of bringing you know, some good initial feedback. I just don't feel like I'm ready to support it yet with this resolution at this time uh, until maybe a little bit more uh, homework is done. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Swara, I see your hand. Thank you, Chair. Um, we have not had a, a new police chief in forever, so I don't think that uh, anyone remembers what that process is like. Uh, I don't. Uh, maybe others on the, on the call does. Uh, but the way that I look at this resolution is saying that when it is time to select the chief, let's make sure that we're getting input from others that the administration is actually consulting with others in the community. Uh, this will be no different from us saying that let's have a committee on cares and let's have a committee on this. This is the wish of this body to say that it should not just be uh, um, just the administration, but to make sure that we're looking at other groups that are involved. In terms of the people that are named, I'm looking at the resolution. The only organization name is the Fraternal Order of Police which has to work with the police chief anyway, and the community oversight board, which has to work with the chief anyway. So the other says other advocacy groups, that's not specified, but saying that take the input of other groups, take input of everybody that is impacted the community in deciding how we pick a chief. That's what the resolution is doing. Having the FOP there, having the COB there, I think it's a given. Uh, 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 and so any other group that the, the uh, civil service or the administration didn't fit, those were not named. And so that's the way that I look at it. Uh, we do this all the time. This is the body saying, this is what we would like to see happen when we're trying to choose a chief. Uh, uh, and like everybody always remind us, it's a non-binding resolution, but it's stating the intent and the wish of this body to say, let's not do it in a vacuum. Let's not have just one or two people. Let's make sure we're having as many people have an input in the selection. So I'm voting in support. I'm asking everyone to, to do that. Uh, 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 this group is not, you know, that's the way that I look at it. Um, and I don't think it's outside the purview of this, this council. Thank you. Thank you, 
Thank you, council members for, uh, uh, council member Bradford, I wanna come back to you. Uh, council member Swar pretty much took the words out of my mouth and when she was speaking on that and also the reminder that, you know, this is not mandating legislation. This is again, a non-binding resolution is basically saying, we as a body would like for the mayor to consider putting these groups as into the process or at least getting to it. So it's not like, you know, we're not passing a law saying it has to be this way. This is just unbinding resolution stating our wishes. And I ask, I ask that everybody support this. Thank you, council members. Is there any more discussion? All right, seeing no discussion, um, would anyone like to move uh, to accept this resolution 2020-431? Do we have a motion? No, the word I thought it was moved. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We're ready to vote. Thank you, Council Member Swart. Yes, so um, vote. Uh, all in favor, please uh, say aye. 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 All against? No. No. All right. So I I think I heard, but I will do a, um, a roll call vote just to, to clarify. Um, so uh, Council Member Roberts? Aye. Council Member Hauser? Aye. Council Member Rutherford. Council Member Swara. Aye. Council Member Taylor, yes. Council Member Withers. Council Member Withers, I believe is a no. Council Member Young. No. All right. So, motion moves. Uh, Council Member Taylor. Yes. This is Council Member Syracuse. Council Member Syracuse. Uh, I, I am not on the committee, but I am here in the council chamber, and Council Member Rutherford is having technical difficulties. Okay. Perfect. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I just wanted to let you know he did want to vote. Do you want to come up to this computer? Come here so they can hear you. He is going to come up to this computer so you can hear his voice. Hang on. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I just I wanted to make sure I was recorded as a no on this resolution. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry for the technical difficulty. No problem. Thank you, Councilmember Rutherford. Right. Thank you. Right. So, uh, motion passes. Four in favor. <laughs> yeah. Zero against. I mean, uh, three against. All right, on the resolution RS-2020-435 by Vercher and Hurt, I request the Metro Civil Service Commission to designate Juneteenth as Metro Government Holiday. Um, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. All right, it's been a uh, motion is taken in. Um, is there any discussion? All right, see no hands in the queue. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 This is Councilmember Withers. I have a question. Nope. Go ahead, Councilmember Withers. Um, during the last term, uh, Councilmember Anthony Davis did a lot of work to get, um, I want to say it was Veterans Day added as a holiday, which was a paid holiday. Um, and that, that took a little bit of work to get that done. I wanted to seek clarification from the sponsors, if I could, about whether they're wanting this to be recognized as a paid holiday, which would be which would be fine, but that does have um, costs that are associated with it. I don't know that we would necessarily have to know that today. I just wanted to get a little bit more clarification on whether this is, uh, we're asking, Metro government to recognize something as a holiday, or we're asking the Civil Service Commission to grant us as a paid holiday. That that's my question of clarification. Council 
Councilman Withers, this is uh, Councilwoman Vercher. This is for uh, Metro Government. Um, I, I work with um, uh, Councilman Davis as a veteran on, on that legislation um, and giving uh, the dynamics of where we are as a city. Uh, this this will be a, a two a two step approach. So at some point later, um, we may we may revisit that um, as it relates to it being a paid holiday. Thank you so much for that clarification, Councilmember Virtue. I, I agree that it's something we need to look at. And it, but as as you alluded to, it, it does take some kind of behind the scenes and fiscal note work to get it, that done. Yeah, it take, it but takes I appreciate a lot the, of work. I appreciate the effort of you to, to bring that forward the committee. So thank you. Thank you so much, Council Members. Thank you, Council Members, and I am so sorry I overlooked your hand. Um, any other discussion? All right, seeing no hands, um, we'll go to the vote. Um, all in favor, please. Uh, Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. All opposed? All right. Motion moves 740 against. Um, all right. Now we're back to uh, our last bill. BL 2023-22 by Hurt, Tombs, and others amends the Metro Code to prohibit the Metro Nashville Police Department from hiring police officers who were previously fired or under investigation by another law enforcement agency for malfeasance or use of force. Um, do I have a motion? So moved. I'll second it. Thank you, motion's been properly moved and seconded. Um, I don't see any hands in the queue. Um, uh, Council Member Young, I see yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I'm not objecting to the, the the language of the bill or anything like that. I, I just have a question for maybe uh, Mr. Cooper as far as um, does the charter allow us to be making departmental level policies in the various metro departments as far as their operations like this? Or is that not something that is left to the department head? Uh, this is John Cooper. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Okay, good. I'm using a new headset. Um, that is kind of a gray area. The charter typically gives the authority to the department head to operate the department. And there is specific language applicable to the chief of police for the operation and control of the police department. There's another provision in the charter that says when a power is granted to a particular individual, then that is deemed to be exclusive. The gray area is um, in the, the charter section dealing with the police department it provides that the chief of police is to develop policies for operation of the department consistent with council ordinances. So there's one phrase in the charter that kind of is somewhat of an opening saying that, that uh, departmental policies have to be consistent with council ordinances. Um, in addition to those, the charter gives the authority to the Civil Service Commission to develop personnel policies for civil service employees, which includes uh, police officers. So there's there's a, a lot at play. And unfortunately, I cannot give you a firm yes or no answer. It's, it's just a gray area. Thank you. Um, and I like I said, I'm I am not opposed in any way to the intent and the the language. I'm just wondering. I want to make sure this is done right. So I'm kind of curious. Um, and and this is maybe a question to the sponsor. Uh, do do we think maybe if we somehow uh, went their avenue of making a recommendation to the service commission so that then they could then uh, promulgate this 
this policy for the police department. I, I just, I wanna make sure that we're not, I don't like operating in the gray area, I guess. Um, and and I'm, I'm kind of curious to where the sponsor is on that. Thank you, Councilmember Young. I'm not sure if the sponsor is on the call. Um, are any co-sponsors on the call? I'm a co-sponsor um, on, on, on the bill. Um, and again, going back to the intent of making sure that we're setting procedures, my understanding of it is that bill and also what Director Cooper said, is that we can make recommendations uh, and we have the authority to do that. Um, before the meeting tonight, I will confer with uh, with the main sponsor uh, and see if she make sure she has a better response before the meeting. Uh, but I believe that my understanding is that this is something that we, we can recommend. And I think based on everything else that is going on, everybody agreed that the intent uh, is right on time and it's something that we all like to do. So I uh, will ask everyone to support it and we'll get more clarification from the minister. Thank you, uh, Council Member uh, Swara, Council Member Virgil. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Chair. I heard one of the, the questions from uh, from Councilman Young. I will work with the sponsor so we can so we can clean up uh, the language uh, with this. Um, this isn't uncommon for for us to have resolutions like this, but we just want to make sure that um, uh, language suggested isn't um, implying a, a particular bias. Uh, in our recruiting efforts and in personnel operations. And, and not to speak for Attorney Cooper, I believe that's what he's saying, but not saying as it relates to, to the gray area. And understandably, you know, what the culture is, but as legislators, and, and I say this all the time, we need to make sure that we're not intensifying a cause and making people uh, worse off from a cause. Um, as well, too. So um, uh, I, I haven't seen where the sponsor has actually gotten on, but uh, we, we have other resolutions to this effect where we can pull some of that language off and use it for this, where we actually end up with the same result, but not in that gray area as Attorney Cooper alluded to. Thank you, Councilwoman Vercher. Councilmember Brett Withers. Thank you so much, I would help uh, Mr. The committee members, to support uh, it. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, Councilmember Vercher rightly has referred to resolutions. This is not a resolution; it's an ordinance. Um, and so, a question that I would have, perhaps, for Attorney Cooper is: Is this ordinance for this chapter amendable on third reading? Uh, it would be amendable on third reading only with a suspension of the rules, which requires um, fewer than two objections. So if more than one person objected, it could not be uh, amended on third. Okay. And you're correct, it is an, an ordinance um, basically directing that um, or prohibiting the police department from doing something. Uh, thank you, thank you, Attorney Cooper. That that is a little bit of, of my concern. I, I, I appreciate the the work of a lot of folks to try to get this right. I just feel like a little bit more work might be needed. Um, I would would want to hear um, uh, on any decision uh, from Human Resources if we can. Again, I mean that that is what our department works with as the personnel committee. I would want to hear from Human Resources, perhaps get a review of, of what the current policies are with the police department and, and at least hear from the police department on that and maybe just get some a little bit more feedback it sounds like some it, it's a great initiative to get done i just worry that we could potentially get to a point on the council floor at the next meeting where you have two objections and then it's not amendable and would would hope that folks would maybe spend just a little bit more time to make sure that we get this ordinance right 
So I would uh, move, uh, you know, and I, I think that could get done quickly because I think there's a lot of will to do that. So I would move for uh, that the committee would recommend a one meeting to deferral uh, to allow some of that work uh, to continue uh, to, for just a couple of weeks uh, to make sure that when we get this at second reading, we're, everyone's pretty comfortable with it. So I would move for a, a committee recommendation of a one meeting deferral. I'll second that motion. All right. There's been a motion uh, for one meeting deferral. Uh, I, I, for a point of order, I believe we had a. Um, do, do we have a motion from Councilmember Swore to move the bill? Uh, Chair, deferral trumps that motion. Okay. Your, thank your, you. your motion on the Councilwoman Vercher, your motion on the floor now is to deferral. And the sponsor has has joined in on the meeting as well. Okay, thank if, you. If you if you choose to recognize the sponsor, Councilmember Hurt. Yes. Well, Councilmember Hurt, thank you for joining us. Um, I know you're having a hard time getting on. Um, so, Councilmember Hurt, we are discussing BL twenty twenty three twenty two. Mm hmm. We would uh, love to hear from you um, as a sponsor. Well, um, we have seen historically, not only here in Nashville, but nationwide, that those officers who have been uh, involved in police brutality have had some form of history of some type of uh, misconduct or uh, police brutality or some misbehavior in the past. And if we want to stop this, we're going to have to hold them accountable. First of all, I think that we- I, I think we're on a different bill. Excuse me? I, I believe we're on 322, and I think you're talking about 323. Okay, I, I, got, I got on the call um late and i was told that this was about the um ex-officers being um so of those council member uh bo 2020 I, I, I apologize i got them switched in my head i, I apologize for you saying, i'm sorry yes yes so council member you uh hurt uh please proceed okay so in that i i do believe that that we need to have some preventive measures. So from the door, making sure that those individuals that have had a history, that they are not considered for hiring, especially if it's egregious um, abuse and um, violations that they have. Uh, second of all, in the climate that we're in right now, we've got to make sure that our constituents know and that and, and understand that we hear their cry. We, we, you know, people are sick and tired of being sick and tired. And instead of us asking for uh, equity, then I don't want it to get to the point where people feel like they have to get revenge. I don't want to see riots. I don't want to see those things that are going to negatively impact us, but let us show a proactive measure in order to make sure that we weed out those individuals who may be problematic for us later. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have Councilwoman Vercher and then Councilmember uh, Withers next. Councilwoman Vercher. Thank you, Chair. Uh, mine was just uh, the, the the procedural. I already stated it about the deferral and, and recognizing the the sponsor. Oh, thank you. I just need to lower my hand. Okay. Yeah. Oh. oh. <laughs> Councilmember Withers. Are you, you lowered? Okay, you're gone. All right, thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just just want to say uh, to the sponsor, I appreciate the work. I, I think everyone's on the same page with you. The, uh, I know that you joined a little bit late. Uh, part of the reason for my motion for deferral is that this ordinance would not be, this is an ordinance, and it's not amendable on third uh, if, if there were even two objections on the floor. I know a lot of great work is moving forward. Uh, what, uh, what I, 
my recommendation uh, was to do uh, continue a little bit more work to educate the committee uh, about what the current policies and procedures are for hiring officers and things of that nature within human resources and the police department, because I'm not sure that I know them all as well as I should, and I'm fairly experienced with that. So my uh, motion for a deferral is just to make sure that we can get that language the way that the committee and everyone is comfortable with before we bring it to the full body. So that's the reason for my motion for just a one meeting deferral uh, to allow that work to continue. Um, and I renew my motion for a one meeting deferral. I, you know, I, I really don't um, necessarily have a problem with with the deferral, and 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 I and I think that there's never too much um, um, opportunity to make sure people are educated about things. But I do believe the timing is everything, and 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 I want to make sure. You know, I've been in contact with uh, Melanie Fowler Green with Human uh, with the uh, Human Relations uh, Committee and and Council, and they uh, offer implicit bias training for police officers. They have a process that they go through, and I don't think that the police are actually utilizing the training that has been put in place for them. So there are some issues that have come up as things have unfolded over the last month and a half of, of unrest, that things are out there that our police department has not taken advantage of. And there are people that have been hired on the force who have had some background issues and they've been hired nonetheless. So I have no problems with the deferral, but I do want to stress that the, that the time is now, that we've got to move. We can no longer continue to sit around and wait and ignore the things that are continuously happening. So that, that's the, the urgency is, um, is, is what we are seeing all across this country. And I don't want that to be here in Nashville. So thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Hurd. Councilmember Young. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to, at your indulgence, maybe kind of fill in. Um, I know Council Lady Hurt wasn't here when we had a discussion about the the charter with um, Mr. Cooper, and and I just wanted to maybe kind of uh, make Council Lady Hurt aware that I think some of the the caution of this committee right now is to get a better idea of should this really go forward as a uh, ordinance or should this be a resolution that goes forward and then on to the Civil Service Commission where typically rules are promulgated for the uh, departments or with the department head. Um, I, I think that was part of the intent to make sure that we're doing this not in a gray area uh, because I think, and I'm gonna speak for everyone here, but that we're all on the same page on this. And there's no, uh, everyone understands the, the sense of urgency, but we don't want our sense of urgency to override our uh, our efforts to make sure that this abides by the charter and is, is not operating in some sort of gray area and to make sure that this uh, stands up to the test of law. Um, and, I, and I thank you for that indulgence, Chairman. Councilmember Withers, your hand is raised. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you so much to um, to Councilmember Hurt. Uh, I, I agree. I think we're all on the, the right, the same page. I, we all definitely understand that urgency. We all want to get it right. I really appreciate you mentioning and reaching out to Melody Fowler Green from the Human Relations Commission. That commission actually reports to our committee, and so it's it's always great when our committee can work with with. Uh, some of the department heads that we work with, such as Human Resources and, and Human Relations Commission, and, and invite them to, to help educate us and inform us of that great work that they do. So uh, it, it's my hope that again, uh, and, and I would uh, love an opportunity to, to maybe work with, reach out to some of those folks as well, to make, to see that if we can do a one meeting deferral, um, to, just to look into some of this stuff a little bit more, maybe get some of those folks to our next committee meeting next time, just to make sure we're all comfortable with what's the best way to meet this goal that we all have. Um, that, um, that, that, that one meeting deferral, I think would, uh, is all that would be needed to, 
to make sure that we're all on, on the same page, that we're doing it the right way. So I, I would uh, love to work with the sponsor on that or the multiple sponsors on that uh, and would renew my request for a one meeting deferral. Thank you, uh, Councilman uh, Withers. I appreciate that. And, and and as I said, I have no problems. I will move uh, to defer, but I do want to say, and I appreciate the, the comments, Councilman Young, of what's been said, and I respect the charter, but the charter needs updating. And a lot of the rules and regulations that are outlined now, and, and our system has failed us. And, and it has failed us because we have not stayed updated with the things that are happening and going on. And 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 for this reason, um, I, I do think that we have to, and, I, and, and, and the Civil Service Commission, I appreciate that and appreciate them and the work that they do, but we must have to admit that our systems are not working in the most efficient and effective ways these days, and they have failed us and we need them to be updated. So thank you very much. So with that, I move to defer one meeting and I would love to work with you, Councilman Withers. Thank you. All right, it's been moved. Do we have a second? Uh, so the motion, you've, uh, Council Member Withers has a motion to uh, defer one meeting. Um, all in favor, please say aye. Um, Aye. Okay. Um, the motion carries. Thank you so much. That concludes our meeting. Parks. Parks is Parks. next.